Hi and welcome to part 12 in this series on the engine from my Peugeot 207 CC that slipped timing. So this engine is the 1.6 EP6 or THP 150 and this video is going to be fairly short because it's basically about removing the oil filter housing which also includes the oil cooler which I'll also open up so viewers can get a look inside this. Now what I also do is to finish removing the other brackets that are on the engine because I've still got things like the engine mounts and stuff like that and also remove the rest of the sensors. So in the next video in the series it should be on the actual stripping down of this infamous engine and I'll probably start with the engine oil sump. So I hope you enjoy this video and if it helps I would appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up and possibly subscribing to see the future episodes on this engine. But for now, thank you for watching and have a good weekend. So then to start removing the oil filter housing. So for that we need a 27 millimeter socket. So this is actually a dedicated FACOM socket because it's extra low profile, which is quite handy sometimes. So we'll just remove this and have a look at the oil filter in there. Now the oil filter actually looks like it's been sort of sucked in on itself. So whether that's a sign that something was going wrong, I'm not sure. But there we are. So we have a quick look inside the oil filter housing there. And then what we do is we remove the cooler part. And for that it's a Torx 30. So I don't think this part is actually designed to be removed or intended to be removed because um, I couldn't find any torque settings for these screws. So you may find that you can't get the seals for this if you actually do remove the cooler. But then saying that there's probably no need to actually remove the cooler. But we're just removing it so we can actually have a look inside and see what's going on because we should have coolant and oil passageways in here. So we'll just knock this off very gently. And there we are. So as we can see, we've got oil passageways there, top and bottom, and the other side is for the coolant. So there's obviously four seals in there, but like I say, you may not better get those seals so remove with caution. Okay, so then we can go on to the actual main body of the oil filter housing. And for that, it's an eight millimetre socket. And there's four screws there. So we just pop these out. So I do put the torque settings and that towards the end of the video. So I do try and cover things if you need to reassemble. So the final screw just coming out now. Give that a bit of a tap. So you've got the two pipes there. One's coolant that goes to the auxiliary pump. And then you've got the oil drain back from the turbo as well. So I would presume that you can get these seals. Because you've got two there, one for the oil, one for the coolant. Okay, so that's what it's looking like. Just give that a bit of a mop up. Okay. Let's see if we can actually see inside there a little bit. Okay, so that's the oil filter housing removed. So I've still got to take a closer look at this oil filter housing. So let's do that. Because that filter, I think I'm going to dissect that filter later on. Um, just to see if we've got any metal in there. Because it does look somewhat curious. So we remove the cooler part again. There we are. 
So that's the oil passageways there and there. And then the coolant is there. And you can see the oil drain at the bottom for the turbo. And the higher, thinner one is for the coolant to the auxiliary electric pump for the turbo. Just pointing that out there, that's the coolant one. And the turbo drain back is that one there. So there is like a little valve inside that housing as well with a spring on it. There's probably a bypass valve. Okay, so let's get on with removing the rest of the sensors and brackets. So we need to start here with a 16mm socket and remove these four screws there for the engine mount to body. So once we've got all these extra bits off, we can then get on with actually dissecting the engine itself. So there we are. So that's the main bracket there. Pop that to one side. And we can go on to the lifting eyes. For that, it's a Torx 40. So there we are. That's one side off. There's a little lug there locating down, just noting that. And then we've got another couple on the other side for this lifting eye. So I try and use long tools so that the camera can get a better view of what's going on. Both of those screws are the same length. And drop it on the floor. Okay, so there's a bit of sealant there that was sticking that on. Okay, so that's the lifting eye. And then we can go on to the oil pressure sensor. And for that, it's a 22 millimeter spanner. So and that just has a little hole in the middle for the pressure. And then we've got the inlet cam sensor. So that's an eight millimeter socket for that. Just pop that out. And then we can go on to the NOx sensor, and that's a 13mm socket. Right, so, so that's the engine NOx sensor. So if I left these on, they're likely to get broken when I start messing around with the actual engine. 13mm again, this is a deep socket for the bracket that holds the inlet manifold in position. And then we've got 16mm socket for the drive shaft bracket. So there's three there. And those are all the same length. We're getting very close now to a bare bones engine. Now remove that bracket. So that's for the bearing on the drive shaft. And then it's a 22 millimeter spanner for the oil level. And I believe this also measures the temperature possibly of the oil. So pop that out. And then we've go on to the sump guard, and that's a 16 millimeter spanner. Just two screws there. And then all we've got to do after this is the crank sensor. So I'm not sure what this is. It what this actually does. It's got a rubber cushion at the bottom as well. It's obviously not holding the sump up. So it's obviously some sort of protection, I would have thought, for the sump. Quite a heavy piece of 
metal as well, that. Okay, and then finally the crank sensor, which is a Torx 25. So just remove the plastic cover there. So at least these sensors won't get broken now. Now they're out of the way. Oh, and lastly, 10 millimetre socket for the dipstick, which I believe weaves itself within the timing chain. That might be quite interesting to see that when we start opening this engine up. Apparently that does go through the timing chain somehow. Okay then. So let's have a quick look at that oil filter for metal. So we'll just chop that open with a saw. So the oil goes on the, the dirty oil goes on the outside first and it should be clean when it gets to the central core. So it'd be interesting to see, I would have thought there would be some metal in here since we've got valves and pistons have hit each other. So not as much metal as I thought, but we've definitely got flecks of metal in there. Yeah, not not a lot, but there's definitely metal. So this engine's definitely not a happy one. Mm. Okay then, so let's go on to some talk and other information which you can pause to view for longer. And as always, some reference photographs which again you can pause to view for longer. And it's going to be a fairly short video because it's basically about removing this filter assembly which I've left on the table. So this video covered the removal of the oil filter housing on a Peugeot EP6 or THP150. And thank you for watching and please like and subscribe to help support the channel. This video was filmed and edited by me, Mark Savage, in January 2024, and I can also be found on Instagram, Facebook and X as Coats and Caters.